Hi there, it's back to Mike here. I'm currently camped out here in Marina di Massa in Tuscany, Italy. Yesterday I took a plane from Schleftio down through Stockholm and onwards towards Milan. At the Milan airport I was picked up by this really nice couple called Giancarlo and Cristina from Italy. And they were kind enough to drive me all the way down to Marina di Massa. And when we came here, we had a lovely Italian dinner and I got a nice good sleep as well. And the premise of this trip is to cycle all through Tuscany and make my way down to Rome. And I have about nine days to do so. And in the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy some nice food and wine, hopefully here in Tuscany. And probably see a lot of nice towns and cities as well, such as Pisa, Siena, and Florence. So now I'm just gonna pack up my tent and head over to Giancarlo and Cristina's hotel, which is about three kilometers away from here, where we'll enjoy a nice breakfast before we hit the road. So we have had a nice breakfast now and we're ready to hit the road and I'm just waiting for Giancarlo and Cristina to set up their bike and then we'll get going. So Giancarlo is basically doing all the navigating this first day of the tour around Toscana and I'm just sitting back here and it's actually quite nice not to have to worry about navigating. I'm just following Giancarlo and Cristina's lead up here and enjoying the sights around me. So we're basically right on the beach promenade, but uh, we still haven't seen the sea yet, which is quite a shame. All the way from uh, Marina di Massa, which is about 10 kilometers away from here, there are just restaurant after beach club after restaurant. So unfortunately you're not able to see the sea from the bike path, which is a real shame. We just found ourselves a local guide here who's taking us to the supermarket here in town. I need to buy some uh, shampoo and uh, toothpaste and other things that I didn't bring from home. So off to the supermarket now. So we've just started the first climb of the day and Giancarlo and Cristina are basically kicking my ass. I'm having troubles keeping up with them. 
a really strong cyclist. reach Monte Magno, which is the end of the first climb. We hope uh, to, to see him uh, uh, in the future. In the future, yeah. on our trip uh, yeah, together. Our trip together. <laughs> I am very happy to meet uh, Michael. And they have been lovely hosts and uh, treated me to both uh, a very nice dinner and a nice breakfast. And I'm really thankful for coming with you and I hope you come to Sweden so I can <laughs> show my hospitality for you. Okay. Uh, ciao! 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 Bye bye! bye, -bye. bye, -bye. So now I'm on my own. Giancarlo and Christina are taking this road down to the coast and I'm continuing on towards Lucca. And I've got a pretty big climb ahead of me here. And it's, uh, I think it's about almost 30 degrees now in the shade. So <laughs> I got a tough bit of uh, maybe 10 kilometers ahead of me here. So I just finished the second big climb of the day and now I mainly have uh, downhill all the way to Lucca which is about 10 kilometers away from here. And uh, I plan to do a tour around the whole town of Lucca. There's an old medieval wall that surrounds the whole town of Lucca. It's about 4 kilometers long so I'm, I'm thinking about cycling along that wall. And after Lucca, I'm planning on ending the day in Pisa, where I found a nice campground that I'm planning on staying at. So now I'll just follow this gentle slope down to Lucca after making that big climb just back there. So I just found my favorite store, Lidl. And the Lidl is great because you can park your bike right outside and they have windows so you can see your bike from the cashier with, which is a really nice thing. And my main objective was to find some sort of toilet paper since uh, most of the campgrounds here don't have toilet paper. And uh, this was the smallest package I was able to find. Two of these huge rolls. So I'm just gonna keep one of them and throw the other one away. And I also managed to find uh, two of these packets of sushi that I'm planning to eat for dinner now as soon as I reach the old town of Lucca. So I'm just about to enter the walls of Lucca and the walls of Lucca is the second largest wall in all of Europe and it's about 4.2 kilometers long. And Lucca was founded about 2000 years ago by the Romans and they actually had a wall before this one and this wall was built in the Renaissance area in the 16th century since the old wall that was from medieval times was mainly just high so that the attackers couldn't climb over it. With the invention of gunpowder instead you had to build a wide wall so that the cannons couldn't penetrate the wall from afar. So now I'm just gonna go through this opening here and hopefully get onto the wall because there's a bike path that goes all along the 4.2 kilometer long wall.
square that I'm standing on right now has a really interesting history. This was actually an old amphitheater back in the Roman days. But in the 19th century they started using this as a sort of marketplace and a couple of small buildings were built on this ground. So back in 1820 they decided to make this a square instead with houses surrounding the whole square. So now you have houses in a sort of oval shape surrounding this whole square. And the old amphitheater is uh, actually about three meters below where I'm standing right now on the square. So I'm leaving Lucca now and heading towards Pisa and Lucca was a fantastic town with absolutely marvelous cycling infrastructure but I suspect that uh, the about 17-18 kilometers I have to Pisa is gonna be a lot more crowded with cars since it's about six o'clock now in the evening so a lot of people are getting back home from their work so so I've probably got an hour left until I'm in Pisa where I've found a nice campground for this evening. So I just made it out of a horrible tunnel. <laughs> I really hate tunnels. I bet I've told you that a hundred times before. But uh, at least I'm out of it now. And uh, if we take a 180 degree turn we can see the valley below me, which if you look in the far, far distance over there, you can actually see the leaning tower of Pisa. So I have about five kilometers left now until I'm in Pisa. So I think it's GoPro time now. So I'm gonna take you along the winding road down to Pisa. So the traffic is really mixed here. Just uh, a couple of minutes ago I went through a really busy tunnel plus a uh, winding busy road after that. But then I found this super nice <laughs> road with basically no cars at all. Just a couple of cyclists. So I'm hoping I can take this in to the city center of Pisa now.
entering the walls of Pisa now. So this thing behind me is the Leaning Tower of Pisa and I'm sure you've heard about it before. <laughs> well, it's about 7.30 in the evening now and the sun is about to set. So I'm thinking about heading over to the campground and then checking out all the sites here in Pisa tomorrow instead. So I think I'm gonna jump on the bike and then head out towards the campground. Well, with my typical luck, the only campground here in Pisa was totally full. <laughs> but since I was on a bike and had a very small tent, I was allowed to come into the campground and find myself a place there. So, whew! <laughs> Hi there, we're picking up right where we left off yesterday, right by the Leaning Tower in Pisa. So the idea now is to explore Pisa, maybe take some breakfast at a square here and go down to the river Arno before I hit the road and make my way to the end destination of today, which is Florence or Firenze. In the heart of Pisa lies a square called Piazza dei Cavalieri, which marks the old headquarters of the Order of the Knights of St. Stephen. The order was founded by Cosimo de' Medici, the first Duke of Tuscany back in the 16th century. And you can find statues of Cosimo all over Tuscany. Nowadays the building surrounding the square belongs to the prestigious University of Pisa, but you can still see symbols of the order all over the square. It's moving around in Pisa is by far best on foot or by bike. If you're driving a car you're not allowed to go everywhere, but with a bike you're even allowed to go the wrong way on one-way streets, as you can see on this sign up here. And it's a pretty small city after all, so you basically move through the city in about five minutes when you're on a bike.
Well, I'm out of the city center now and I found this nice bike path along the river Arno and uh, I'm gonna follow it as long as I can. So I'm going to this old medieval town called San Miniato. Uh, the, the first 50 kilometers or so today has been super flat. But to be able to reach this town, I have to make a climb of about 200 meters. Woo! <laughs> and I've just uh, done the first part of that climb, so now it's a bit easier here. San Miniato is located on an historic strategic location, along the Via Francigena, right where the road between Pisa and Florence meets the road between Lucca and Siena. Therefore, it has been an important trading town throughout history. So I'm just taking a little break here in this nice park, just by the square in San Miniato, after making that climb all the way up to the tower here in San Miniato. So according to the GPS, I'm about the halfway point of the ride today, which to be honest with you, <laughs> feels a bit tough. I'm quite beat already. It's about half past three now, and uh, I was hoping to be able to make it to the campground just outside of Florence tonight, and I really hope I'm able to do so. And hopefully I'm lucky as I was yesterday with the campground so that I'm able to get a spot for me and my tent tonight. So according to a sign back there, we've just entered Chianti wine region, which is one of the top wine regions here in Italy. Can you see me in the dark? <laughs> so I finally made it to the campground that's located about 5, 8 or so kilometers outside of Firenze or Florence. 
and uh, I have to say this day really took a toll on me. I'm not riding with my Garmin this trip but according to Google Maps I made about 100 kilometers today which is way too much for me this early into the bike tour. Plus I've eaten way less than I would have liked to so I'm really hungry now and so I'm just gonna pitch the tent quickly here and then hit the showers and hopefully make it down to the restaurant before they close for the evening. So I finally got some food in me and now I'm about done with this day. <laughs> I think I'm gonna make it an early night since uh, tomorrow I'm planning on going into Florence and exploring the town. The ride tomorrow is only about 60 kilometers but I still have to climb about a thousand meters so that's even more than I did today so it's still gonna be a pretty tough day. Welcome to the third day of my bike tour here in Tuscany, Italy. And today we're starting off at Piazza di Macellangelo, overlooking the city of Florence behind me. Getting here was a bit of a nightmare. The traffic situation in the morning here in Florence is real intense. But now I'm here and uh, I'm uh, looking forward to getting down to the city center here and exploring it a bit more. We've just uh, started having a bit of a drizzle here and uh, according to the weather forecast today it's going to be thunderstorms here in the afternoon so I'm getting my rain jacket ready and uh, hoping for the best. So behind me here you can see a statue of Cosimo de Medici, a banker and politician back in the 15th century who was pretty much the ruler of Florence back during the Renaissance area here in Italy. And there are statues of Cosimo all over Tuscany but the one behind me here is probably the most famous of them.
I've made my way to the Cattedrale Santa Maria del Fiore, which is probably the most famous landmark here in Florence. And this church was built back in the Renaissance area, back in the 15th century, and was upon its completion the largest church in all of the world, seating over 30,000 people. And it also has a really impressive dome or cupola on the other side of the church here. And the dome was financed by the Medici family. And you really need to be here in person to be able to appreciate how grand and huge this thing really is. I have no idea why this sandwich shop is so popular, but we gotta go with the locals. Just look at the line behind me. It's way around the block. It almost looks like uh, the Soup Nazi episode of Seinfeld. Just starting out under a tree here to get away from the rain for a couple of minutes. So it's been basically just climbing over hills and then uh, steep downhills and then climbing again ever since I left Florence. So I'm now deep in the Chianti wine region and I'm aiming to follow this road all the way down to the little town of San Gimignano. That is a small hilltop village perched on a big hill. And uh, I think I have about 30, 35 kilometers left until I reach San Gimignano. And uh, there looks like there's a campground about two kilometers south of San Gimignano. So that's probably where I'm gonna sleep tonight. There are water fountains like this one in almost every town here in Tuscany. The problem is you just gotta find them. <laughs> so what I do is I have this app called maps.me. So if I just do a search for drinking water, you get some small blue dots where these fountains are located. So it turns out that there's a lot of steep climbs or small hills here in Tuscany. And some of them you might just want to hike up them instead and do some hike and push the bike at the same time. <laughs> but at least 
I got some lovely views while I push my bike up this hill. So I had to change plans and take a shortcut or <laughs> shortcut, shortcut in kilometers but not elevation. So taking this shortcut meant going up to this hilltop village called Monte Fiorale. And I think I had about 200 meter climb to get up here. And now we're just waiting for the red light to turn green here. Uh, since only one car can go in one direction at a time. So we have to wait for the oncoming traffic here. Whew. This climb turned out to be a lot more than 200 meters. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm about 600 meters in right now. <laughs> There's the saying that shortcuts are often detours. <laughs> but hopefully I'm near the top and then I'll have a nice decline from there. You see the village down there with the castle? That's where I stopped maybe half an hour ago and waited for the red lights. That was 200 meters into the climb, so I'm now at 600 meters in. So I just did some dinner shopping here at my favorite store Lidl. <laughs> and uh, for those of you who wonder why Lidl is my favorite store is because of this reason. You can park your bike just outside uh, the store and you can see the bike when you're standing in line at the cashier. So it makes shopping kind of easy and stress-free so you don't have to worry about your bike or someone's going through your panniers. So I have about 12 kilometers left to go and 12 kilometers doesn't sound like that much but uh, it has 200 meters of elevation. So I got a long climb ahead of me here and right now it's 7 o'clock and uh, the sun sets in about 15 minutes or so. So I'm gearing up with my front light and back light on the bike now so that I'm seen in the traffic. So I'm looking forward to becoming a bit sweaty again uh, before I reach the campground but I hope they have a warm shower waiting for me when I get there. feeling of getting into the shower after a hard day out on the bike battling the heat here in Tuscany is worth the 17 or 18 euros alone. For this trip I didn't bring a stove for a couple of reasons. First of all uh, for keeping my packing volume down <laughs> and the second one is uh, that I know by experience that when I'm on these international trips I tend not to use the stove as much as I do back home in Sweden when I'm basically camping out in the forest. 
usually when I'm here in Spain, Italy or France, I'm uh, staying at campgrounds. So it's a lot easier to uh, eat a good dinner at the campground or at a nearby restaurant. Plus it allows me to really dwell in on the local cuisine. And yesterday I had a really nice pizza and uh, tonight I'm uh, doing it more basic. So I, before I came here I stopped by Lidl and bought some food that I'm gonna enjoy now. So I thought I'd show you what I got. First of all, I got this bottle of nice white wine, which I'm not gonna drink everything, believe me. <laughs> and I got these olives and feta cheese. Also got some potato chips. Grana Padano cheese from Italy. Some nice grapes. And to top it off, some Italian cheesecake. All in all, I paid just under 10 euros for all of this. Welcome to the fourth day of my bike tour here in Tuscany, Italy. So right now I'm camped just outside of this hilltop village called San Gimignano. And the plan now is to of course pack down my tent and uh, head over to San Gimignani and uh, discover this beautiful hilltop town. After that I plan to head towards Siena. But before I reach Siena, I'm also making a stop at an old fortified town called Monte Regioni. Today is probably going to be a bit of a shorter day. I'm only looking at about 50 kilometers. And I know I told me the same thing yesterday, but according to Google Maps and the Komoot, there's not that much elevation today compared to yesterday. So. I'm probably looking at a nice day on the bike. So while I'm still here at the campground, I thought I'd show you how I charge my electronics on campgrounds here in Italy. So if you see the thing behind me here, that box over there, that's where all the magic happens. So you need to bring one of these adapters in order to be able to charge your electronics. Because this wall socket has a different plug than the usual European wall sockets. So what I usually do is I just have one of my power banks plugged in here basically all night. And maybe some camera batteries as well. So I never really leave my phone charging in one of these sockets. I'd rather have my $30 power bank stolen than my phone. So behind me you can see the town of San Gimignano, also called the Manhattan of Tuscany because of its magnificent towers. And back in the 14th century there were actually about 72 of these towers, all at about 50 meters high. But a lot of them have been torn down during numerous wars during the years and now there are only about 14 towers left. So the history about the towers is that there were competing families for the rulership here in San Gimignano and they kept building towers to kind of trump the other family by just raising the highest tower maybe a meter or so in height. And while I was standing here trying to film this shot, a woman just walked past me. Which reminds me that now we're actually on the Via Franceggiuna. Uh, that is an important pilgrimage here in Italy, sort of like the Camino de Santiago in Spain. So this pilgrimage leads all the way to Rome. So a lot of people stopped by San Gimignano on their way to Rome, which made it a pretty important town in, back in the medieval times. And I see we have some more hikers coming along this path down here. So I'm, I'm just gonna move my bike so that they can pass me.
standing here at the main square or piazza in San Gimignano and uh, this square is actually tilting so much that I have to hold on to my bike so that it won't fall over or just go down the square. <laughs> So here's my breakfast slash lunch for today consisting of yogurt with uh, blueberries and uh, raspberry, a bunch of strawberry, some uh, grape and apple juice and some biscuits. And all in all this breakfast cost me just about 5 euros. So San Gimignano turned out to be a really nice place but I think it's way too touristy for my taste. I don't really want to be in that big of a crowd. I'd rather just sit like here in a park and uh, eat some strawberries and enjoy the nice day. However, I'm uh, probably just gonna go right through town now and uh, do the big descent down to the next stop, which is Monte Regioni. First climb of the day. <laughs> Just lucky that we're in the shade most of the time here. I'm getting closer to the next stop of the day now, which is Monte Regione, an old fortified town perched up on a hill here. So I think I got a bit of a climb before I get there, but I'm about two kilometers away now. So I'm taking a break here on this bench in this fortified town called Monte Regione. This town was built back in the 13th century by the Siena Republic as a front line in their defense against Firenze, Florence <laughs> and uh, Volterra. And the wall that surrounds this whole town is about 500 meters in length. And since this is perched 
up on a big hill. They have a perfect 360 degree view of the whole valley here. And this is also right on the Via Francegina pilgrimage trail. The opening in the wall right behind me here is the entrance from the north side of the Via Francegina. So I have about 20 kilometers left until I'm in Siena, which is the end destination of this day. So I think I'm gonna hop on back on the bike and head towards Siena. So this day has been the best day of the whole trip so far. So I found these lovely roads that are covered by trees. So don't have to be in the 30 degree Celsius sun either. I made it to the one and only campground here in Siena and I have to admit I was a bit nervous about coming here since last night when I tried to check if they had some empty pitches here there were none to book so coming up to the reception uh, I had my finger crossed and I was lucky enough to get a spot but as you can see this uh, Ground here is leaning more than the leaning tower in Pisa, but uh, I think I've found a pretty nice flat spot anyhow. So I'm here record early for me. It's only 5 p.m. right now and I usually pop in at the campground at about 8. But I thought I'd take advantage of the facilities here. So I'm gonna just pitch my tent and then head down to the swimming pool down here and try out my nice bath cap <laughs> that I brought along and then maybe take a glass of wine and uh, actually go on the bus down to the city center here. I was considering taking the bike but then I would have to find a secure spot to park it in, in town and for once it can be nice to not have to think about the bike in the evening. So I'm looking forward to a nice evening here with a short swim and a night out on the town here in Siena. As you can see, bathing cap obligatory. So I'm glad I brought my bathing cap back home from Sweden. Now it's about 7 o'clock, which is perfect time for an aperitivo. The thing that Italians often go out before dinner. Usually dinner is at 9 o'clock or so. So to maintain your hunger, they often go out for a drink. And that drink is sort of happy hour in other countries. So I'm gonna look for one of those these aperitivo restaurants now and see if I can get some snacks to nibble on while I enjoy a nice drink here in Siena. Thank you. 
So this is how aperitivo works. I just ordered an aperol spritz and with the drink I got some a plate of chips, some nuts and a small sandwich. And all this I got for six euros. And it's nice to sit here along this cozy street and watch people go by preparing for their dinner later tonight and this is just the appetizer for me I'm gonna go head downtown later and find a real restaurant or a trattoria to eat my main dish of this evening later So now we head downtown and check out what Siena has to offer and uh, I'm also going to be looking for another restaurant where I'll eat my main dish of the evening. So I finally found my gelato for the evening and now I'm just going to take a stroll on the square here in Siena and uh, see if there's any action happening. So I thought I'd be full already, but uh, can't turn down a slice of uh, prosciutto and fungi pizza for 2.5 euros. So this is my dessert for the evening. This is the fifth day of my bike tour here in Tuscany, Italy. And uh, I'm woken up by a really nice day today as well. We got some clouds here and there, but mostly a blue sky. So probably it's gonna be a hot day today as well. The plan for today is to cycle towards the towns of Pienza and Montepulciano. And while doing that, I'm gonna go through some really nice classic Tuscan landscapes. There's two areas that I'm gonna go through first, Crezenesi and then Valdorcia and uh, these two are really classical Tuscan landscapes with cypress trees lining small gravel roads leading up to a farmhouse. The only bad thing about today is that I haven't found a place to camp tonight and <laughs> believe me I've been looking like for the last two days but there's hardly any campgrounds around in that area and uh, I've tried to call and mail a couple of agriturismos as well because I really want to stay at one of those but uh, unfortunately it's a Saturday today so they're mostly booked so I might be looking into doing some wild camping tonight if I can find a forest so join me as I cycle through Siena and head out towards these typical Tuscan landscapes we got time on our side Oh, 31 kilometers an hour. <laughs> i 
Okay, I gotta hand it to you, Italy. This road that I've been on for the last 15 kilometers or so, it's probably one of the best roads I've been bike touring on in my whole life. <laughs> 360 degree views over this fantastic landscape all the time and barely no cars. There's like one car every three minutes or so. And most of them are probably tourists today drive pretty slow and just want to look at the beautiful landscape around us. Hello. And the odd bike tourist here and there as well. I'm just taking a break here at the side of the road, enjoying the nice vistas behind me here. It's been uh, pretty slow going today. I think I've only gone about 25 kilometers and I've been at it for about three hours or so. Basically just because I have to stop all the time and take photos and shoot videos of this magnificent landscape behind me. So I really hope you appreciate me taking you with you on this trip because it takes a lot of time to do this types of videos but I'm not complaining I have wonderful weather and beautiful sights around me and this part of Tuscany called Kret Senesi is by far the most beautiful I've been through yet so if you're ever planning on doing some cycling here in Tuscany I can really recommend this part compared to the other couple of days in the beginning where I had to battle traffic and to be honest there wasn't that much to see along the road this is the total opposite. Fantastic roads and you have a car or two passing every three or so minutes. So it's really fantastic cycling here.
So I stopped at the supermarket maybe a couple of hundred meters away from here and found this park in this lovely town called Asiano. And I'm planning on having my lunch here. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon, so it's perfect lunch time for me. <laughs> so I ended up buying a salad. I sort of wanted a sandwich, but they didn't have any. So a big salad with cheese and croutons and olives and uh, potato chips. I'm really in for getting some salt right now. Grapes, there are my usual snack throughout the day, a couple of bananas and to top it off some gelato and all of this cost me eight euros in total as many times before when I'm out bike touring and this is especially true here in Italy you're not supposed to eat the ice cream first but I think I'm gonna start with the ice cream because this is about to melt in about five seconds you know what I think I can probably save this for maybe three or four minutes more so I might just start off with the salad first instead So I think I might have solved the problem with where I'm gonna stay tonight and the answer to that question is Monticello. Monticello is well known for their world famous wine Brunello di Monticello. And there's supposed to be some sort of RV parking up there but the only problem is that uh, it's about six kilometers away and 300 meters of elevation. <laughs> so uh, you can see it right behind me here right where the sun is almost setting now up on that hill it's always up on a hill right <laughs> well i'm gonna take it pretty slow and hopefully i won't be totally beat when i get there i'm almost at the top now i can see the sign for the first roundabout here in Montalcino Whew. The grapes behind me here are probably some of the most expensive grapes in the whole world
So I just barely made it up here to enjoy the sunset over the Tuscan landscape behind me. So I went down to town again for a bit of pizza that was molto bene, very good. The only problem now is that I have to make it back up to where I put my tent in the RV park and that's about 1.5 kilometers away from here, which doesn't sound that far. However, there's an elevation difference of about 100 meters, which makes that 10% uh, grade almost, so I probably have to push my bike most of the way to get up there. Today I'm starting out in this little town perched up on a hill called Montalcino. And Montalcino is well known for their famous wine Brunello del Montalcino. It's one of the most renowned wines in the whole world. So I'm just gonna take a short look around town before I head downhill. I have about 300 meter descent before I get back onto the main road again. So join me for another fantastic day here in Tuscany and sure looks like the weather is on my side today as well. Unfortunate circumstance number one, it's about nine o'clock on a Sunday morning, so I'm not really in the mood for wine tasting right now. And unfortunate circumstance number two, is that I'm on a bike tour and I have about four days left until I'm in Rome so I'm not going to be able to buy one of those wines and carry along with me. It feels like I'm cycling in a maze here. There's just small streets all over the place. I have no idea where I'm supposed to go, but I'm just crisscrossing along here. Well, I barely made it in time. With about five minutes left, I made it to the supermarket here in Pienza. Since it's a Sunday today, all the supermarkets closed at 12 or 1 o'clock. So I bought some salad and some drinks for lunch, and I'm gonna head to a park to enjoy it. The most important thing that I got was this pecorino cheese, which uh, Pienza is very famous for. When in Rome, right? Well, I'm not really in Rome yet, but I guess you know what I mean. A 
I found me a nice park here in the center of Pienza and I thought I'd enjoy myself a little bit of pecorino cheese. Pecorino is made here in Tuscany and in the Lazio region around Rome. And uh, pecorino cheese is a bit salty, hard cheese. And you can find a similar one to this one in the United States called Romano cheese, but that's a bit more mild than the pecorino cheese. So let's have a bite. Ideally, I would have some crackers and a nice glass of Montecino Brunello wine right now, but uh, I'll have to do with this. I found this type of salad yesterday and now I bought another version. This is some sort of Greek salad and they are great value for your money. They cost about two euros. You get olives and feta cheese and some carrots and lettuce as well. So combined with something else like the pecorino cheese, it makes for a nice fresh lunch. I'm just gonna blend in the rest of the pecorino in the salad here. So Pienza was founded in the 9th century and by then it was called Corsiano. And during the 15th century it was also the birthplace for Silvio Piccolomino who was later to become Pope Pius II. And during his papacy he decided to rebuild the whole town in a more renaissance fashion and at the same time rename it to Pienza which sort of means the city of Pius and he also used this town as his summer residence during his papacy. Well, over there it looks nice, but if we turn over in this direction, <laughs> looks like we have some rain coming in here. That's not every day that you see a Saab Swedish car here in Italy. So we're off to the next town which is Montepulciano and that's about 12 kilometers away from Pienza. So I'm having my fingers crossed that I'm able to make it there before the rain is upon me. <laughs> it's looking pretty dark around me so I'm gonna be pedaling quite hard now to be able to make it there in time. But I had to take cover under a couple of trees in the forest but it looks like the wind is blowing in that direction, so we'll probably have a blue sky in a couple of minutes now, thankfully. <laughs> if you can see there's a major front over there, so it's moving in that direction hopefully. You can see Pienza way in the horizon over there, that's where I was maybe half an hour ago and that seems to be all clear right now. So I just found this information board and I thought I'd show you where I've started today and where I'm going. So I started this morning in Montalcino, went all the way down to and up to San Querico di Orcia and this was where I saw those nice cypress trees in the morning. Then carried on towards Pienza and according to the sign I'm right here now and I'm in a couple of kilometers time in Montepulciano. And after that I'm cycling about south to the town of Sartiano where there's a really nice campground that I'm aiming to stay at tonight. And after camping at the RV park yesterday without any shower I'm really looking forward to getting to a really nice 
campground. According to their website, they have a big pool with the water slides and everything, which sounds perfect right now. <laughs> So behind me here you have Montepulciano and Montepulciano is famous for their fine red wines and maybe most notably for Vino di Nobile Montepulciano which was the first wine to receive the prestigious DOCG denomination. So here's what might happen when you're trying to set up a shot in a town with a very steep road leading up to it. So let's just pretend like nothing ever happened. So I've left multiple channel now and I'm heading for the campground and it's about 20 kilometers or so left until I reach the campground. I was really tempted to try a glass of Multipulciano wine up there, but I decided to be responsible and save my glass of wine for later this evening. Hopefully I can find some good wine on the restaurant at the campground or just outside.
So I just made it to a restaurant here in Sarciano. We just ordered a bit of lasagna and while I wait for that I'm enjoying a glass of Vino di Nobile Montepulciano, which was the place that I visited just before I came here. So cheers. Today is actually the last day that I'm doing in Tuscany. The last two days will be in the Lazio region. And Lazio is the greater Rome area. And I have about 200 kilometers left until I'm in Rome. So that should be doable in those three days that I still have left on this bike tour. And to be honest with you, I don't really have a great idea on what's ahead of me today. The only thing I know is that I'm headed south towards Rome. But it's a pretty nice day today as well. We got some blue skies mixed with a couple of clouds. So I'm looking forward to yet another great day here on the roads in Tuscany, Italy. So I just made a stop here at the supermarket to buy some breakfast and while I'm standing outside the supermarket I can talk a little bit about going to the supermarket here in Italy. First you have to have a mask on and then you have to check your temperature when you go inside of the store which I was afraid of in the beginning since I'm uh, out cycling and sweaty and stuff so I thought my temperature would rise a bit but it's never been a problem really. And shopping at one of the smaller supermarkets is often a good idea because you can find whatever you're looking for pretty quickly. But the problem is when you get to the cashier. Usually there's a line of about five to ten people since they often just have one line open. And then every person that's trying to pay takes about two minutes. So you're usually standing in line for 15 to 20 minutes because everyone pays with coins and I don't know why but for some reason they seem to want to have the exact change available so they're standing there looking through their wallet for the exact amount of money that they need so it takes a <laughs> quite amount of time there's also a problem because the cashier can only service one person at a time because the belts are so small so the person ahead of you has to pack everything they bought before the cashier can service you. So this is just a huge waste of time for everyone.
So after having climbed for the last half hour or so, I reached the top of this hill <laughs> and found this nice place here. There's like 20 benches and tables, some sort of barbecues. And uh, I have no idea if you're allowed to camp here. Not that I'm going to because I probably have 40, 50 kilometers left to do today. But what I can understand with my very limited Italian is that it's provided by the municipality for some sort of group activities. Maybe scouts or church youth or whatever. <laughs> So after rain must come sunshine <laughs> and the same thing here with after making a big climb I have a nice decline to look forward to according to the height chart that I've just looked at. All the way to the next town it should be pretty much downhill from here. It feels like we've just entered another climate zone. It's lush and green down here and uh, up on the hills it's uh, almost like a desert. And I've never experienced such a flat and straight road during my whole week here in Tuscany. And on that note, I think we're actually leaving Tuscany in just a matter of uh, an hour or so. We're entering the Lazio region instead. So I just happened to stumble upon the Via Francegina again and I was able to spot this sign from uh, the road up there. So I thought I'd go through and sort of summarize where I've been in Tuscany now that I'm actually leaving Tuscany and heading into the Lazio region. So I started up first in Massa and then cycled to Lucca, down to Pisa to San Miniato and then on to Firenze. Cycled south from there to San Gimignano and then to Monteregione, Siena, Moltacino, <laughs> Pienza, Multipolciano, Serciana and all the way down to this star where I'm at right now. So according to the sign, I'm just about to enter the Lazio region and leave Tuscany, which is a shame. Maybe apart from the first couple of days, which were in a lot of traffic, the last couple of three or four days have been really nice with not that many cars. I was a bit afraid in the beginning, I have to be honest with you, 
due to all the traffic. But uh, they're very considerate here in Italy since after football or soccer for you Americans, cycling is probably the na number two sport here in Italy. So they're very considerate when it comes to maintaining um, about a meter or a meter and a half distance between you, the cyclist, and the car. As we're heading into a more populated area, which Lazio is, and of course Rome, I'm probably gonna seek up the Eurovelo 5 and follow that as much as I can, because I'm guessing that the roads will be a lot more traffic than what I've had for the last couple of days here. Bye bye Tuscany, I'm gonna miss you. There is a life I lead in this city, hurrying to cut my teeth. I can take what I need to get by. Doesn't make it easy. The other I'm just taking a break here in the middle of a long climb. It's a bit of change of scenery. Once I've entered Lazio, now everything has started to become very lush and green, as you can see further down the hill here. Plus, there are also a lot of signs that we're in Lazio or the greater Rome region. There's a lot of eagle symbols, and the eagle is the symbol of the, the Lazio region or the old Rome territory. Hello. So I think I've mentioned this before, but there's really no use to buy water at the supermarket here in Italy, yeah. both for your economy's sake and even more for the environment's sake. Because there are these fountains or tap water places all over Italy. In almost every town they have one of these, or in many cases, several of these. So what I do is I just go uh, on my maps.me app and search for drinking water and I found these sort of fountains or whatever you call them. And the best thing about these is that the water is really cold in these ones. So after maybe two hours on the bike the water gets lukewarm and it's always nice to fill up with fresh cold water again. So I took a break here admiring the nice view behind me of Lake Bolsena or Lago di Bolsena which is the fifth largest lake here in Italy and what makes it even more interesting is that this is an old volcanic lake. About 350,000 years ago a big volcano collapsed and created this lake and this is the largest volcanic lake in all of Europe. 
and at its deepest point it is about 150 meters deep. So now I'm looking to stay at a campground on that side of the lake and I have about 10 kilometers left until I reach the campground. Looking at the terrain in that direction it looks like I have mostly downhill towards the campground. This place, Bolsena, has maybe 10 campgrounds and I had my eyes on two of them. So I've been checking both of them out and the one back there had a really sort of sand clay surface. So I think I'm gonna go back to the first one that I checked out, which was more grassy. I'd rather pitch my tent on grass than on sand. <laughs> so here's the campground now, I'm just gonna turn down here. Unfortunately, this one seems like the pool is closed and I wouldn't mind taking a swim in a pool. So now I've showered and basically feel like a new person. But now I really need to head back into town again since this particular campground only took cash for the campground fee. I'm running a bit short on cash if I want to eat something in the restaurant. So I'm going to jump back on the bike and cycle the maybe five minutes or so back into town. So I got the money from the ATM and now I'm getting really hungry. It's about 8.30 in the evening now, which is perfect time for dinner here in Italy. So let's head over to the restaurant. <laughs> so you need to have your mask on in the restaurant before you eat. You can, you can take it off when you eat and when you drink, but all other times you should wear the mask. It was a bit of a hassle in the beginning, but now I've gotten used to it. If you could just smell this pizza right now. Oh. And I'm super hungry, so this is gonna be delicioso.
and uh, I'm just about to get ready to hit the road for this, the eighth day of my bike tour. Not in Tuscany anymore, but in Lazio, Italy. Today is probably going to be one of the longest days on this bike tour. I have about 80 kilometers to cycle to be able to reach the next campground to put me in close proximity to Rome for the last day of this tour. And as usual in the beginning of the day I have a big climb that I have to make. I have about 300 meter elevation to be able to reach the next town which is called Viterbo. So let's just pack up the last things here and head for the road. So I decided to follow the Eurovelo for a while and ended up on this shortcut. <laughs> I don't mind the gravel, but the gravel roads are often way hillier than the paved roads. So I have to put in some effort to get up to the next town here. Well, we just reached the outskirts of Viterbo, a big city that has maybe 70,000 inhabitants. And the traffic situation right now is pretty miserable. <laughs> I had to pull off the main road and go through this industrial area instead. So I'm, uh, I've been looking at the map and uh, I can basically just follow this road all the way through town and hopefully find the Eurovelo 5 in the middle of town again and uh, pull up on that instead because the last couple of kilometers here have been really miserable. The shoulder is maybe this wide and you got trucks pulling up ahead. They are still good at maintaining distance and uh, stopping behind you before it's safe to pass but still an uneasy feeling to have a big truck just behind you waiting to pass so hopefully this will be better but unfortunately as soon as you get into a town or a city the surface of the roads get downgraded a lot they're usually fine when you're out in the countryside but for some reason when you enter a town the roads get totally miserable as you can see here <laughs> This is a typical road in a town or a city. So you have to be alert and watch out for those potholes and cracks in the road.
So I told you yesterday that taking off my shoes and putting on my slippers was probably my favorite moment of the whole day. But it can compete with this. Just sitting down in a nice park and having a lunch and getting away from the bustling traffic. That's also one of my maybe top three moments of the day. So as I've told you many times before, I usually don't buy water at the supermarket. Instead I use the available fountains that I can find and I just saw one back here as well but when it comes to lunch I usually like to spoil myself with some carbonated water so I'm gonna enjoy this now for lunch So I took the Eurovelo getting out of Viterbo to stay away from the heavy traffic and then I stumbled upon this. It's like I'm cycling through a cave. <laughs> Well, you know how I keep telling you that this day is probably the best day of the whole trip. Well, this day is probably the worst day of the whole trip so far. <laughs> Either you go along these gravel roads where you can go maybe five kilometers an hour, totally super bumpy, basically the Via Francesina hiking trail, or when you get tired of those, you head on to the main car road and you're basically holding on to your bike for dear life because uh, you have cars sipping by you at about 90 km an hour. Don't get me wrong, I really love making these videos, but I'd rather make it home to see my kids than getting hit by a car. So hopefully I'm able to go off this road and take a smaller one just up ahead here. After that, maybe in 10-15 kilometers, I'm gonna turn off this road and head down to a lake where I'm planning on staying at a campground.
Finally some nice roads and the traffic seems to have uh, died down a bit as well. I'm finally getting close to my campground for the evening. I'm just going downhill for maybe three or four kilometers and uh, then I'm then I'm there. <laughs> this has been a super long day, but sometimes bike touring is like this type two fun. I'm probably gonna appreciate it a lot more when I get home and start editing all these videos ev that even days like this seems wonderful where the sun is shining and I have a blue lake waiting for me when I go down this hill So I've reached the campground now and uh, yeah it's funny when you look on uh, different campgrounds web pages and you see this lovely green grass and when you finally get there you're met with this and this is still one of the better spots here on the campground because I've been walking around trying to find a nice flat space but I'm so beat that it doesn't matter. I'm probably just gonna go to bed early tonight and uh, get up really, really early in the morning because I have the last stage of my tour and I wanna get into Rome around lunch or so so that I have time to go and see some uh, sights in Rome. Hi there, it's Bike Tour Mike here and this is the final day of my bike tour here in Italy and if everything goes to plan I'll make it to Rome maybe in the afternoon today. I'm starting out right now in a town called Aguilara Sabazza which is about 40 kilometers north of Rome 
and I'm right on the boardwalk eating my breakfast now. And as soon as I'm finishing up with my breakfast, I'm gonna hit the road and start toward Rome. And I'm looking forward to a spectacular day since I know Rome has a lot of nice things to see once I get there. So follow along for the journey and uh, I'll see you out on the road. So we just made it to Rome and uh, while getting in here was a bit tricky. Once you're in Rome, there's a nice cycle path that follows along the river Tiber. It's pretty easy to get around in Rome on a bike. So now I'm just gonna follow this until the first stop, which is the Vatican. So yes, I'm 0 for 2 right now. I just got stopped over by the kind police officer back there who told me that I wasn't allowed to ride my bike in the Vatican, obviously. <laughs> and then maybe 10 seconds later, the same policeman told me that tripods weren't allowed either in the Vatican. <laughs> To be able to film this, I had to be a little inventive, so I just put the camera on one of these statues here. So I've actually been into the St. Peter's Church once before, about three years ago or so, and it was well worth the visit. However, I remember the lines were crazy outside. <laughs> it's a bit of a slower day today, but I'm still not gonna go in because what to do with the bike, right? So I'm just gonna stand here for a while admiring the buildings around me and then hit the road and go to the next stop which should be the Spanish Steps. So now we are way over to the Pantheon and this is the best preserved building in all of Rome. Built back in the beginning of the second century, it was used back then as a temple of all gods. 
but since the beginning of the 7th century it has been used mainly as a church. Now we made it to Fontana di Trevi, where Swedish actress Anita Ekberg took a dive in the movie La Dolce Vita by Fellini back in the 60s. All those sites set aside. This is probably my favorite place here in Rome. This is Villa Borghese, sort of like Rome's own Central Park, or vice versa. I'm guessing this was probably built before Central Park. <laughs> this is a great place to just walk around, ride your bike, or take your family to a picnic on a nice day like this. And I'm about to end my sightseeing tour here in Rome, right outside of the Colosseum. Now we're gonna make the about 20 kilometers or so to the campground. And uh, the campground is located right in the middle between the city center of Rome and the airport. I'll make the rest of the way in the morning. I'm probably looking at uh, leaving the campground at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. So I made it to the campground and I even got a chance to try out their pool area because the pool closed at 6 and for once I was here at 5.30 so even maybe just for 5 minutes I had a chance to try out their pool. But I still gotta take a proper shower, I just wanna set up my tent first here. Me and the family actually stayed at this very same campground about 4 years ago and I think we had maybe this spot or perhaps the spot right next to us here. <laughs> there are maybe just 10 spots for tents. So there aren't that many to choose from. But uh, I chose this campground because it's fairly close to the airport. It's about 15 kilometers left. I'm heading over there tomorrow morning. I think the plane is leaving at about 10 in the morning. So I'm setting my alarm for about 5 a.m. I'm uh, calculating with about an hour, maybe hour 15 minutes to get over there and then I probably need about an hour to wrap everything and fix the bike inside of uh, my CTC plastic bike bag that I'm using for transport back home.
So the plan now is to set up camp as usual and then take a shower and lastly enjoy a nice bit of meal and maybe a glass of wine too to celebrate that this tour is in the books. I think one of the great things about going on these types of trips yourself is that you have some time to reflect over things. And when visiting these things uh, today, especially going to the park, Villa Borghese, and seeing kids playing around where my kids played around four years ago, you realize that even though going on these trips for about one to two weeks is a lot of fun, the most important thing in life is your family. So with that said, I can't wait to get home tomorrow and see my kids and my wife again. They really mean a lot to me. I'm really thankful and blessed that I'm able to go on these trips and Malin, my wife, takes care of everything back home. So for those of you who are able to go away and maybe leave your family for one week or so, Make sure to thank those who love you back at home. Those are the ones that matter the most. So I'm standing here trying to summarize this whole trip. This trip has probably been one of the toughest that I've done, but also one of the most rewarding. I've gotten to see fantastic sights along the way. Probably the best couple of days were those days after I left Siena, when I went out on Kretsenesi and Valdorcia. Those I really enjoyed the most. And the evening I had in Siena was also on top of my list. And I really hope that you've had a good time following along on this journey as well. Until next time, have a good one.